Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Recently, I was lucky enough to get hold of one of the Tyranid Battle Boxes that was released just before Christmas. This was going to be a great way to add to my Tyranid collection, as I didn't have any of the models that came in this box. I had an idea in my head to convert the Hive Tyrant to make him look a little bit more intimidating, and hopefully get him to look a little bit more unique as well. I dug out all my spare Tyranid bits, and while I was putting the plan together, I realised that everything that I needed actually came in the Hive Tyrant kit. No need for any more bits. I would also need some Milliput, and some florist wire. If you've not used Milliput before, it's a very useful modelling material. Mix equal amounts together until it's all one colour, and then after a few hours it'll dry rock hard. It can be shaped easily, filed and sanded, and it's great for filling gaps. I left the Milliput to one side to start to cure and to make it easier to work with, and then started to put the rest of the kit together. I started using the tail meant for the flying variant of the Hive Tyrant and used some clippers and a modelling knife to remove the piece of the rock at the bottom that's meant to allow you to glue it to the base. I smoothed the tail off until all of the unneeded bits were gone. Next I took the legs meant for the flying Hive Tyrant and I cut off the big spikes on the very bottom and smoothed off the bottom of the hooves until they were flat. I built the torso as normal in the instructions and added the spikes onto the front. Next I plugged a small ball of the milliput into the torso before pushing the waist joint in to get the right shape. I then put some super glue inside the joint and then used a toothpick to blend the milliput into the waist to make the joint less noticeable. The milliput made the model taller and also gave some more flexibility to the posing. I had him leaning forward slightly as I knew later on he'd be staying on a raised base. I then did the same process again with the neck joint, again adding a little bit more height and also meaning that I could turn the head more to one side. The body was now done and already looked more dynamic than the standard build. Next it was time to add the arms. I glued in the venom cannon in an upright position, a little nod to the original metal hive turret I had in the 90s. The bone sword was then glued into the joint below the venom cannon and then the second sword that was meant for the swarm lord variant was then glued into the other bottom arm joint. I know that rules wise he should only have one sword, but I like the way it looks so it stays. Next was the whip arm, this was going to be the focal point of the model, the bit that would really make it stand out. I had already worked out a way to make some organic looking tubes and tentacles, using the same miller part as before and some florist wire. The first thing I did was to cut off the whip from the arm and then smooth it off using my knife. I then got five lengths of the florist wire, took one from the bundle and then wrapped it around the others. As I worked up the wire, I split them and then did the same thing again. I did this twice along the wire until I had one long length of wire with three ends branching off it. I cut the ends down until I was happy with the length and then shaped it roughly how I imagined it would look. I split the wire at the base and then wrapped that around the whip handle. More wire was also added for strength and I covered the joint in super glue. A quick test fit and I was ready for the next stage. I took small pieces of the milliput and then wrapped that around the wire, pushing it into all the gaps and smoothing it with some water, allowing the wire to show through and creating a bumpy, veiny appearance similar to an umbilical cord. I did this down the whole length of the wire and then blended it into the handle on the arm. I then used these small spikes that are meant for the walking hive tyrant's legs. I cut off the very ends and then glued these spikes onto the end of all three of the ends of the whip. While all of this was left to dry, I added a smaller cord that I had already made onto the gun, which was then joined onto the hive tyrant's waist on the back, and then again blended in with some milliput. I wasn't happy with the join on the gun, so I covered it using this piece to make the join look more natural. 
Because the tail came down lower than the feet, I then had to raise him up from the base. I mixed up some sculptor mold, another amazing modeling tool, a powder made from paper and plaster that becomes a paste when mixed with water. It dries really quickly and is perfect for building terrain. I used a toothpaste lid with one side cut out to add some structure to work from and then started to build up the base using the sculptor mold until I had the shape I wanted. To add strength to the join between the feet and the base, I drilled some holes in his feet and then glued some paper clip inside. When the base was dry, I drilled two holes in the sculptor mold and then pushed the paper clips in, covered them in super glue and then left this all to dry until the join was solid. To attach the whip arm, I then did the same process again using the paper clips and glue between the arm and the shoulder joint to add some strength. With the arm glued in, I then covered the base using my homemade basing material. I have another video up on the channel showing how that's made if you're interested. I primed in black and then gave him a white zenithal highlight from above before painting him. And here he is all complete. If you're interested in seeing how he was painted, please check out the first video on my channel. There's a full guide of how it was done there. I'm so pleased with how he came out. I know the whip is going to be a bit of a pain to transport, but it's actually a lot stronger than it looks, and it still has a little bit of flexibility, so I'm confident that it won't snap. He feels more dynamic and intimidating than the standard build, but I couldn't be happy with the end result. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that it gives you a little bit of inspiration for your own conversions. Also, if you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing and giving the video a like. It does a huge amount to help the channel. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all soon.